RKW is brewed by Ethan Rose for the fourth and final hour of your Wednesday morning. Welcome in. 615-737-1045 is how you join the discussion with Ramon Foster, <laughs> Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh behind the glass. I'm Will Bowling, joined now by the executive producer of Titans Radio for the fourth quarter of the show. The show gets better in the fourth quarter when Rhett Bryan steps into the 104.5 The Zone Studios. Good morning, Rhett. Good morning, everyone. And for everyone watching on YouTube TV, I was emulating the... Uh, NWO's N-W-O. for life. Yes. For life. For life. Too sweet. That's what we do around, what we do around here, Rap V. How are you living, man? I'm good. Uh, so we are introduced to the offensive and defensive coordinators today at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, 1230. I'm sure Buck uh, and Lucas will have yeah. that covered live. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the list of 321 NFL Combine invites dropped yesterday morning, and uh, I'm just parsing through the numbers and looking at some interesting things uh, as it pertains to that. 74 of the 321 invitees are from the Southeastern Conference, 23%. And you're saying, well, that's a lot. Well, that's not as lot as, as it usually is, which speaks to the NIL part of things and what how dynamic that is in college football and the trickle – up effect, I guess in this case, you're going up to the NFL. Yeah. Only 15 uh, invitees from sub-FBS schools. Only three of those on defense. And that, that again, speaks to transfer portal and all those kinds of things. It's a big man's game, Ramon. 70 yeah. offensive linemen invited. 50 defensive linemen invited. Ooh. The trenches, that's where it starts. Mm-hmm. And Michigan, the defending national champions, more than any other school represented, and in fact, a school record for them. 18 players invited to the combine. To put that in context, Ohio State, eight. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, isn't that wild? It also speaks on that series, too, now. Oh, Ohio absolutely. State. That's why Ohio State's pressing the, and recruiting mm-hmm. an NIL right now, too. Bingo. Get it right. But yeah, I just, sorry to give you a long answer about how I'm no, doing, but that's kind of what's uh, yeah. rolling around here in this old melon top. And back in July, Jim Harbaugh, <laughs> the of course now head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers, did predict that and said in July, I think we'll have 20 guys picked. I bet we break the draft record. And people laughed at him at the time. And he might actually end up being not far from correct. Now, the only uh, kind of ridiculous thing I've heard him say in the last few weeks is that J.J. That J. McCarthy will be the first quarterback. Thing. I'm yeah. like, whoa, whoa, That's whoa, 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 whoa. let's minute. pump yeah. the brakes a second. Yeah. Now, I will say this. J.J. McCarthy has a chance to be the fourth or fifth quarterback taken. I mean, he'll... he. he I think he will go a lot higher than people think about because... If there's one thing Coach Dave McGinnis has taught us all, there is the draft, and then there's the quarterback draft. That's correct. Oh, and that goodness. is good for the Tennessee Titans at seven because maybe there's a scenario where you trade back to get your number three back. I know you guys have been discussing that. Right. But um, the quarterbacks rule it. I mean, and look, depending on who you ask, Kayla Williams from Southern Cal, yep. um, Drake May from North Carolina, one, two, however you put them. I think Drake May is probably the better quarterback of the two. Really? I do. Oh, wow. Interesting. I do. Um, and then the third quarterback, I believe to be Jaden Daniels, LSU. Yeah. Just sure. because there's so much there in that talent. It is. I mean, yeah, a true dual threat quarterback. Yep. Right. Absolutely. He can throw it and he can run it. Yes, he can. And he can do both pretty doggone. I, I, would, I would say he's a better, bigger conference, power five conference school representative of and they're not the same player, but a, a better, more polished because of competition level Lamar Jackson kind of thing. Okay, see that. Yeah, <clears throat> it's interesting when you say that. And I'm looking on Twitter, and Lewis Riddick has literally just retweeted himself on Get Up this morning, saying he thinks <laughs> Jaden Daniels is the number two quarterback, which surprised me a little bit. And you know what? Through this draft process, as they get the top thirty visits, the interviews with all the teams, and those kinds of things. Could be. Right. It yeah. could very well be. Uh, there's so many things that go into that. Obviously, the the personality and the makeup and you getting to meet the guy, the medicals are also a big part. of. That's why uh, the one who stands to lose as much as anything is Michael Penix Jr. from Washington. Sure. Because the knock against him before he had that great year 
uh, the last couple of years at the University of Washington was the medical stuff, both knees, both shoulders. And so the medical checks on him at the combine, I mean, the, the doctors, it'll take a team of physicians to look him over. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then he didn't have a great showing in the national championship game. And that wasn't even against a, no, no knock to anybody out there as a right. Michigan person, but that, that wasn't, you weren't going against Georgia or Alabama or, right. or whatever. Um, so it just, you know, he, he he dropped, in my opinion, just due to those things. And then we saw it at Senior Bowl that you can make him uncomfortable. You and can. some of the throw he can make throws, but he has to be provided that pocket to be able to do that, which is, it sounds, it's like, well, that's obvious. Well, yeah, it is with but any quarterback, matters. but mm -hmm. some quarterbacks, it matters more. Yes, it does. And the thing for him is this, too, when we start talking about his combine showing, he'll probably end up having a better Pro day than than combine at his school for this reason right here he that the MRI machine takes a while those doctors gonna sit there and pull and and, and just yeah. grab on him sure rotate his arm here and that and he he honestly may be at the hospital all day long <laughs> like a session in the MRI machine can be thirty to forty five minutes and if you move an hour plus. So they got to do both knees, I'm sure, unless he's going to go earlier and have it done. It's, it's just, it can be chaotic for a guy that has that type of stuff, but also has that type of potential. Well, there's a lot of times when we're at the combine, they miss their opportunity to speak as the position groups go throughout the mornings there at the convention center, their opportunity to speak at a podium or in front of the media because they're getting all those medical checks. There are yeah. some who have, you know, had that go on. Uh, the thing I'm always fascinated by with the Combine, and, and Coach Dave McGinnis explained this uh, the other day on Blaine and Mickey, uh, every team has a Combine scout, air quotes here, that it, that's what they look for in terms of finding prospects that maybe come from a smaller program. And they have periodic meetings throughout the year, and then it's like, hey, we should get this guy. Yes, I've seen that guy as well. He looks really good. Let's do it. And I'll give you a couple examples. So, there's a gentleman uh, in the offensive line named Anim Dankwa. He is 6'8", 368, tackle, Howard. First prospect from Howard to be invited to the Combine in over a decade. And then here's another one. There's a running back from Monmouth named Jaden Sheeran. Mm -hmm. mm. Jaden, 5'9", 200. We'll see what that ends up being at the Combine with the measurements. But you're like, okay, Red, he was a, a back at Monmouth. So what? Well, that's a, that's a very good... Uh, program at their level. They compete frequently. But the explosion that I see when you look at his numbers, yeah. this Jaden Sheridan kid, uh, six 200-plus yard rushing, rushing games, 14 rushing touchdown runs of 50 yards or longer, 17 100-yard games, and he can catch it out of the backfield as well. And doesn't have a lot of tread on the tires in three seasons, 504 carries. You were talking about running backs in particular in this draft. Uh, they might not go till a little bit later, which there and there's a good list of them. There is, and I think that's a couple of things. If you look at the free agent potential free agent list this year, I mean, you're talking about could be Derrick Henry, could be Saquon Barkley. Uh, you start working through those, and then again, you talk about transfer portal, NIL, and those things. But there's no clear cut number one back right now as we're speaking mm -hmm. on Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody, yes, by exactly. the way. Um, you're going to hear the names um, from the power programs. Trey Benson from Florida State, Jonathan Brooks from Texas. Uh, obviously, Blake Corum has a bigger spotlight after – helping Michigan win the national championship. Ray Davis. But, but there's, yeah, Ray Davis from Kentucky who started at Vanderbilt, who I really liked at the the Senior Bowl. But, uh, yeah, a and one of the ones to watch on the radar, and Vols fans, you already know who it is. His <laughs> name's Jalen Wright, the junior. That guy, he's going to impress some people. Yes, he, he really is. is. Um, and uh, with that in mind, I'm kind of surprised that Jabari Small got snubbed. He did oh. not get invited. Allen yeah. Castles, I thought, was going to be up there because he had some buzz around him earlier yeah. in the transfer portal last year. Uh, but I'm also wondering, do the bigs, did the bigs take away from that invite number 70 <laughs> and 50 plus D linemen? I would think that took away from a few positions, uh, quarterback probably being the one exception uh, because, you know, it's such a quarterback driven game. But to your point, uh, Kayla, uh, Dane Brugler dropped his top 100 big board the other day the on beast. the athletic, and he had 
Uh, he did not have a running back until the uh, number 65, and he described it as a run on them after that. Okay. So in the middle rounds of this draft, you can, and even in day three, you can find some value for running backs just because the de- devaluation of the position itself and then the things I mentioned about who's a free agent that you could pick up and, you know, just kind of how everything is working with NIL and the transfer portal. And that running back that Dame Brugler had ranked highest is Jonathan Brooks, the redshirt sophomore, six foot, two hundred seven pound back from Texas, mm-hmm. at number seventy, yep. which is uh, interesting. And then you've got him, Blake Corum of Michigan, Braylon Allen from Wisconsin. Uh, of Wisconsin. Yep. There's uh, of course a Wisconsin running back yeah. who is still uh, in the draft process. You and get why not? Bucky right. Irving from Oregon at that point. Audric Estime from Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. And Jalen Wright of Tennessee. I, I think the the interesting thing with Jalen Wright, Rhett, is the miles per hour he hit against Georgia at the time was the fastest speed and miles per hour, I think, of any player in college football this year and was matching what Tyreek Hill has put up um, as a Miami Dolphin. If that guy has the technique and the ability to run something in the four threes or, I mean, even below that, possibly, uh, which is obviously rare territory Mm -hmm. he's got a chance just as a returner to add so much value to what he can do and and it's more than just and i'm glad you brought that up will because yes i would agree and and that potential lies with there's some track athletes throughout this thing come on i mean man (laughs) i've seen some guys i saw some numbers posted uh, about some of the top high school 200 and 100 meter guys and a lot of them are at the combine but um it's not just the 40 that's the thing that's that you got to remember and we talked about this before i came in here these big offensive linemen, defensive linemen, it's not the 40 they run. Nope. Mm-hmm. It's that first 10 yards. Mm-hmm. What's the explosion off the off the snap, off the, the, the get-off, as they call it, when right. you're a pass rusher? Uh, but for a running back, to see what he does in the pass-catching drills, to see what he does in the three-cone drill, to see all of those things, and, and the explosion in terms of a vertical leap, all of those things. If you see good marks on all that stuff – and then he checks out interview eyes in front of people, and the the medicals are good. Yeah, the, he'll he'll uh, greatly improve his chances. Jalen Wright, his last year as a high school track runner, ran a six seven two sixty meter dash indoors. Hello, that is that's blazing. That's very very fast. Ten eight five was his best hundred, and that was as a uh, sophomore, I believe. So, anyway. by the way, of of all the combine invites, here is their overall multi sport. Uh, Percentages that multiple sports played by eighty four percent of these guys. That I love that. That's impressive. Sixty percent of them track and field. Will Come am on. I in your wheelhouse now? Yep. Am I in it? Yeah. Uh, top high school one hundred meter. Jalen Wright ten point five eight. Yeah. Mm. Not shabby, huh? He was a he was a COVID I think senior or junior. So I think he even like missed his senior year. From what I remember. Outdoors, and I know you I just had an indoor. Just season. talked about that field. Yates mock yeah. Roma Dunze ten point six seven, and he's a big guy, really one hundred meters. He's not small. Yeah. Hello, let's talk about the new Titan staff when we come back with Rhett Bryan, a former Titans assistant who is back for stint number two in Nashville. Plus, all of the hires that were made official yesterday. What stands out to the executive producer of Titans Radio? We'll ask him next. What's going on? It's Will Bowling here for my friends at Brentwood Hearing Center. Do you or someone close to you find it maddening to hear conversation when there's background noise? Maybe it's while you're at your favorite restaurant or even watching your favorite team play this March on the hardwood. Well, if so, if this applies to you or someone you know, I'd like to introduce you to my friends at Brentwood Hearing Center. With five doctors of audiology, state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment, 
and the most recent hearing device technology. They'd like to help you get off the sidelines and back in the game with better hearing. With over 85 years of experience from their convenient location just off of I-65 in Brentwood, they tailor a hearing solution to each individual patient. That's what you're going to get with Brentwood Hearing Center, our personalized touch because they understand there is no cookie-cutter approach to better hearing health. Give them a call today, 615-377-0420, or visit them online at BrentwoodHearingCenter.com. Let the madness this March be on the courts and not in crowded situations. 615-377-0420. That's Brentwood Hearing Center. Better hearing, better life.
Rolling right along in hour number four on RKW, brewed by 8th and Rose, 615-737-1045. If you've got a Titans question for Rhett Bryan, who's in studio with us this morning, Ron Foster, Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling, what are we listening to, Rhett? The late Bobby Hatfield and Bill Medley, the Righteous Brothers. What is this off of, though? What movie? It's not Ghost. 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 That's, yes, that's what you, really kind of it recharted after that. Okay. And Patrick Swayze, Patrick Swayze and Whoopi Swayze. Goldberg. Yep. But yeah. Uh, the the something. Righteous Brothers, Unchained Melody. Uh, and I wanted Bert to play that because it's Valentine's Day. Love so it. the, this is a timeless love song. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's this song, I don't know, 1965 or six, something like that. And uh, still played somewhere every day. Yep. It's really good. Including 1045. The zone. Love the it. zone. Fantastic. I thought it was You'll Never Walk Alone for a second. Uh, it does kind of have that same cadence, yeah. doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Rhett, when we look at the new Titans staff, which is not completely finalized, still a strength coach and a special teams coach who will need to be hired within this, uh, we have spoken about Tracy Rocker as a guy who will begin his second stint with the Tennessee Titans, a 32-year coaching veteran who spent the last three seasons as the Philadelphia Eagles defensive line coach. Uh, He's the guy that we immediately kind of flock to in beginning our assessment of all of these new faces and 10 coaches who were added uh, and a guy whose reputation speaks for itself. And got his first pro job with the Titans, 2011 to 2013, as the defensive line coach. So, he was uh, instrumental in in bringing along Carl Klug and Derek Morgan and and a lot of those guys back then. Great D line coach, uh, clearly. I mean, to have a career like that and some of the talent that he and in Philadelphia, where they're loaded oh, no. on the D line, they got an eye for it, don't they, Rhett? <laughs> they do. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, that's that was a welcome sight as well as Frank Bush, the linebackers coach, who was here from eleven and twelve, one of the better linebacker coaches. Uh, in the league, and then Steve Jackson, former defensive back of the Oilers, and uh, his second stint. He was assistant uh, special teams coach, um, actually, uh, sorry, secondary coach right. back in 2017, and was instrumental in, in the development uh, of Kevin Byard back then. Uh, the the one that I, has my attention is the running backs coach, mm-hmm. and he is a really good one. Really good one in uh, was it Randy Jordan, right? Yes, Randy yes Jordan. That that's correct. correct. Randy, Jordan. Randy Jordan spent the last ten years with the Washington Commanders, so he's worked with uh, Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson and all those guys there. He was instrumental in in helping uh, Gio Bernard, Giovanni Bernard, all those years ago, um, and was a good running back and player himself. He's special teams captain of the Raiders when they went to Super Bowl thirty seven back in o two. Very respected running backs coach uh, in the league, for sure. So, But, yeah, it's, it's nice staff from what I can see so far. I'm very interested to see who the special teams coordinator will be um, and just seeing who's departed and a few who were retained and kept. Um, you know, the strength uh, and conditioning staff is there. Frank Barino leaves and is now with the New York Giants reported. Um, John Stryker. Mm-hmm. Stretch, as we all know him, right. uh, Mike Vrabel's right hand man is, uh, I believe, now what is called the director of football strategy That's for correct. the Los Angeles Rams. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's just this is what this business is. Sometimes it's turnover, 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 and there's a lot of continuity there for a long time when you have a head coach in place for six years, and when things change, they change in a lot of places. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting, Rhett, too, talking about Tracy Rocker and someone who has more college coaching experience. And I know he spent a lot of time in the NFL, and it's not like you're just plucking a guy out of college who doesn't have experience here as well. But 24 of his uh, 32 years of coaching is coaching at the college level. And I find that particularly interesting on a team that is trying to get younger and trying to maybe slant more towards younger, more quote-unquote teacher-type coaches as they try to bolster their roster to the draft and and rebuild this thing. Not the worst idea to have someone who has a wealth of experience coaching younger players as well. And I think that's a theme that you see throughout uh, the the staff that has been officially introduced now in the press release that the Titans put out yesterday. 
Um, and I, we heard Rand Carthon mention it in the official Titans podcast sure. and Chad Brinker as well. It's about having someone, including head coach Brian Callahan, who is maybe younger or has spent time with younger players, and the difference of approach in how you coach these gentlemen. Yeah. Because, you know, yelling and screaming and pounded fist and, you know, doing all those things doesn't always apply to everyone no. on a football roster these days. There's there's different approaches to this. And I think they have they're you're showing by what they're doing here is kind of leaning into that. You need balance. This team is at a at, at a fine point, I feel like, of having some veteran experience and Jeff and Monty Hooker, you throw some guys out there like that. And then uh, offensively, mostly younger. Defensive line, younger dudes that's that are still very much impressionable on what you can do and say to them and how you can train them up to be your guys moving forward. Red, I have to ask you, man, considering Tracy Rocker and we talked about it earlier, Bill Callahan, how intense is one on one's gonna be in training camp? <laughs> uh get your popcorn ready. <laughs> now, I'll say Just it like that. There, right? Yeah. And you're you again, oh God, Bill Callahan is the offensive line coach. Uh, listen, it, for what the Titans need in that area. Uh, that's heaven sent. I mean, because, you know, golly, what a great football coach he is. And then the, the experience that Tracy Rocker brings, yeah, the, when training camp, that, uh, what, third practice when they put the pads on? Yeah. Get ready. But, but I, it's, <laughs> it's going to be fascinating because you, you have a guy in Tracy Rock and also Coach Callahan that are pretty much fluid in how they will teach and coach, right? They have to be because they got all that experience. They know what certain players' body types look like, what's going to be required of them too. But just at Tracy Rocker's last stop, him being a, a attacking style of defensive line, that's going to be played right into Jeffrey Simmons' style. Mm-hmm. And then offensively, you look at the aggressive styles that that Cleveland brought with Bill Callahan. This is a mashup. Of, if you got the right type of guys, and the pedigree matters, it matters a lot with who you draft and who you get to coach also. Um, but you got to expect this to, should be an aggressive team moving forward with the bigs up front. And I think it starts. If you got a good team, your bigs lead the way it's where the battle begins. It's the first line of everything. I mean, it, look, we saw how important that was the other night in the Super Bowl. I mean, yeah. San Fran, their their defensive front did a fantastic job, even forced turnovers. Yep. Unfortunately, their offense did not capitalize on those. And between that and a missed PAT, a blocked PAT, that's probably the difference in the game. Right. It really is. Um, But, yeah, and, and – you know, in terms of trying to get uh, an, another guy back, uh, you look at the free agent list of the Titans, there's a defensive big lineman there that's little age on him that I think you'd like to bring back that might might help you a little Danico? bit. Danico? Little Danico Autry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'd like to see him come back and work with Jeff. Yeah. And, and then just to see what else they put into place there because as we approach free agency and the draft and all those things. Um, we were looking at just some of the – the coaches that were retained and I looked at the Chris Harris I was a little bit surprised about Chris Harris for the fact that he when coming over from Washington last year was highly regarded Mm -hmm. and really when we spoke to a lot of the guys individually in the secondary this year spoke highly of him and really liked the way that he was able to get across to them and communication and I know that the numbers weren't there this year I, and there's some injuries that came into play and stuff like that Kevin you trade away a star safety that's exactly. right exactly yeah. but um do you feel like this is a surprise that he stayed here in this position or how how good is that I guess that they retained a guy like him a little surprised yeah um I mean look I think ownership and certainly Brian Callahan would look and go yeah that this person's really good we should you know yes yes mm-hmm. and there's a handful like that justin outen i feel like is another example of Out that tight ends. um and then it was interesting to me to see luke stocker return yeah. I, I love luke stocker uh, awesome. i was glad on that and, one, and uh so uh, you know i think that's good um but yeah you could do worse than bringing chris harris back i'm glad he's back mm-hmm. I, I think that's uh, and in a place where you're going to need a safety to go with a Monty Hooker, and you're going to need a corner or here or, or two there. You're going to need some continuity there, uh, and, and he would bring a, a stabilizing part of that. We get a chance to talk to, obviously, Brian Callahan today, but also the two coordinators. 
Um, what do you feel like is the most important thing to kind of get out of today, just knowing about them, kind of learning about them for the first time? I think maybe a peek behind the curtain of what their offensive and defensive philosophies are, mm -hmm. especially the, the offensive coordinator uh, to uh, Nick Holtz to go to go with the, the aligned thinking of Brian Callahan. Because, you know, Brian Callahan is going to call the shots in this. Uh, but certainly um, Denard Wilson and, and what his defensive approach is and, you know, look, getting him from the Ratbirds, yeah, man. that ain't a bad thing no. in this deal. No, getting him ain't. from Baltimore is not right. a bad deal there. It so just not. those kinds of things and just kind of seeing what their personalities are. Um, you know, Coach Mack knows a bunch of these guys. Mm -hmm. um, he knows Denard very well. Um, but, yeah, I would start there and just – I'm going to be taking notes like everybody else, just trying to see what I hear and what I pick yeah. up from there. And, you know, kind of how uh, Brian Callahan sets them up on a tee and, and, you know, what questions are asked and ask and how, and how they're answered, I think, is, is a big part of it for me. Rhett, we've spoken a lot about Brandon Ayuk and a guy who has a fully guaranteed 50-year option on deck for the tune of $14 million this upcoming season. And an opportunity for San Francisco to either extend him and lower that cap hit or to trade him this off season with that second round pick sitting where it is for the Titans and how close it is to the first round. That's a, a high value pick that the Titans have there where theoretically you could get maybe one of the top five interior offensive linemen at that point, or you could move it for a Brandon Ayuk or for a tag and trade situation like T Higgins. How do you value the Titans' second-round pick. What are your thoughts on moving that to get a more proven commodity at wide receiver? I wouldn't hate it, but I, I think we need the proper context of what did they do at number seven? Absolutely. Did they stay at number seven? And, and as to how to set all that stuff up, because uh, what was it? Uh, Field Yates had the Titans taking Roma Dunze at seven. And uh, so, you know, I think it also depends on do you bring back and continue to have uh, DeAndre Hopkins on this roster. Right. I think that's a big factor in what you decide to do with that. But, yeah, depending on who it is. And Brandon Ayuk, I mean, yeah, wouldn't hate it. I know you loved him coming out of the draft. I remember Absolutely. going through that with you my Absolutely. first year working. Through a draft. And, and T. Higgins, and, you know. Not an empty chair, as Coach Max says. <laughs> uh, so yeah, e either one of those wouldn't be wouldn't be bad. I think it just depends on what their philosophies are, what they have done in free agency that leads up to that weekend. Um, so yeah, I mean you're going to see, as we always called it, the season of lies. It is in lies, full swing. Right, we'll see yeah. what's floated out there and what ends up being so, and how much of it is off the wall. Uh, one guy I was brought up was a uh, mock guy, J.C. Latham. I, I think. Two two guys got to show good. Almost three. Jackson Powers Johnson, as far as where he's going to settle at his weight, because he's like 330-ish for a center. Mm -hmm. be, you know, they'll question that. But his quickness was real good. J.C. Latham and also Tavondre Sweat. Those weigh-ins right there are probably be the three biggest uh, just just highlights of the week, I think, when they're doing the Underwear Olympics. Where, uh, Red, where you the at on Underwear those guys? Olympics. Yeah, and the, and the gentleman yeah. that I mentioned uh, in the first segment, too, the – Offensive lineman from Howard. Yes, mm -hmm. from Howard. Uh, Anim Dankwa. He'll be one that will tip the scales in a fashion I think close. think Amarius Mims, too. Yes. yes. Yes, because the J.C. Latham, I've seen 6'6", 360. 360-ish, yeah. And we saw Tavondre Sweat. Yeah, big boy. That is an enormous human being. <laughs> big boy. That is a big fellow space eater right there. Uh, but, yeah, uh, again, that's the thing. You know, quarterbacks, you always look at the hand size. Everybody is fixated on that in terms of how <laughs> yeah. they can palm a ball and all that yeah. stuff. Um, but, yeah, there's going to be some guys that are going to tip scales pretty big time. Jackson Powers Johnson, I'd be interested to see what the medical stuff is because he had a lingering injury that he hammy, aggra it? I think so, that yeah, he sure. aggravated, did not – he tweaked it in one-on-one warm-ups in, in day two practice uh, at the Senior Bowl and did not return. Um, but, yeah, so – yeah, there's some there's some big fellas in this draft. It is, man. I can't believe 70 offensive linemen. Pretty shooting. wild, huh? Yeah. God, it's insane. Is, is there any way tri Titans trade down? Because not having a third pick does seem like a hole 
doesn't it? I mean, right there, there you can get some really valuable sure players at that. You, you know, absolutely in that can, round. and but, we've talked about. I mean, the depth at wide receiver, the depth at running back, all of those kinds of things could lead. And uh, it's a good year for offensive line inside and out. Uh, the edge pass pass rushers are still pretty decent at that point. Um, look, anything's possible. Um, I think it depends on if they've got one guy in particular at that top of that right. first pod on their war room board, or is a couple of those guys gone and do they go best available or do they go, no, we really had our heart set on A and B and both of those are gone. So let's entertain some stuff. And the quarterback's going to dictate that stuff. Yep. The quarterback, who's who's selected in terms of that? Um, and what's going to get lost in all this is who in the world gets Marvin Harrison Jr.? Oh, yeah. my gosh. And I don't man, think we're even talking about him, right? I, I see <laughs> reports that scouts are saying this is the biggest can't Miss yeah. prospect in over a decade. Well, like he's, he's proved everything like, yeah. since the moment he got on so campus, good. though. Yeah. And I thought it was interesting. Dane Brugler, in his top 100 prospects, has Marvin Harrison Jr., the number two prospect behind Caleb Williams, and Malik Neighbors at three, and even writes in the athletic, the gap between Neighbors and Harrison is not a big one. He is That's as wild. high on Malik Neighbors as anybody that I've read. That's wild. Now, here's the thing Malik Neighbors is going to show some speed, he's fast. And that's the difference between him and Roma Dunze. Right. Roma Dunze is a more polished receiver, route runner, catcher, all of those things. Malik Neighbors is the Ferrari yes. in the driveway. Yes. Yeah. You're looking at his tape, you see the differences in the two, and both make plays. To your point, it seemed like it, it seemed like Rome gets open through concept, and it seemed like Malik Neighbors get open by watch me run <laughs> past you. Let me hit the mm-hmm. nitrous oxide <laughs> yeah, button. Yeah. It, it's just a stop and go. If you're not getting the tackle that you want, and Malik Neighbors is still there. Boy, that is one wide say. Yeah, that's that's I get that pick. Set yeah. up for the Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> Scoot the Ferrari. All right. A lot There's of that a movie tonight. out called Ferrari, I think, right it, now. It Ford is. versus yeah. Ferrari. Ford versus yeah. Ferrari. That's, that's a that's great that, movie. That's that's those two are receivers. True story. Yeah, seriously, right? <laughs> Yeah. He is Rhett Bryan at Titans Radio with us every Wednesday at 9 o'clock here on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. Rhett, thank you as always. Thanks, it Rhett. is a That's pleasure. Right. Happy Valentine's Day you to too. everyone. Coming up next, Inky Johnson and Midweek Motivation plus a college football rule change proposal to make college football a little bit more like the NFL. Coming up next.
Wrap it up the show in RKW, brewed by 8th and Roast. A very happy Valentine's Day to all listening. As you listen to the sounds of <laughs> Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert mm-hmm. Walsh, our producer, I'm Will Bowling. This does take you make, back, doesn't it, it? Yeah, I thought, I thought, Bert, I'm a little disappointed. I'm going to be real with you today. Uh-oh. What I, I do now? I thought I thought we were going to at least get some Meg The Stallion and oh, Cardi B. That's not what it's about, was, man. I no, she was no, no, play no. That's for later today. in the night. That's uh, like eleven yes. thirty. That's like eleven forty five when yep. you get back from your Valentine's Day. Or those singles man. Man. for the Friday night house party. <laughs> I <laughs> thought, <laughs> thought you'd hit us with some WAP today, and absolutely not. There is a kids' Bob version of that. Oh god, that's I, what I was referring to earlier. Really? Of that song? Yeah. Mm. I, I'm still shocked y'all had not heard of Kids Bob. I have, I not have heard, of, heard kids of Kids Bob. Bob. I have. But I'm not, I'm I mean, neither I'm not heard. around a lot of oh, kids. Oh, no, I, I got kids. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing Kids Bob. I, mean, I just grew up with Bob? it. Because then I'll be yeah. on that. Well, that's called watching Beethoven on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel <laughs> like it, it makes its way to social media quite a bit of like, oh, have y'all heard the way kids have tried to make this very not clean song clean? <laughs> and it's always it pretty up. funny. Is what really a a a It is. I have to hear that. That is insane. It's really funny. I do want to do it. Like, let's do it as a bump. That'd man, if I freeze up one more time on these cameras, man. Yeah, 104.5 The Zone TV, where you can watch the show, Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch, and see your own Foster's frozen face. You always All right, do you, do you really want to hear this, Kids Bob? You really want to hear it? Yes, please. I, I, I yeah, please, please, please. Hear it. Yes, I let's do. Let's do this. Oh. Oh, my God. Put no. the rolls in my Put mouth. the rolls nice. in my oh mouth. My no. Ah. No. Oh God! Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> Welcome, kids, Bob. I can't Eating all those I wings, can't pizza, I and rolls. <laughs> Telling you. Oh my God! I just had a heart attack. Wings and pizza. W A P. Made it me means. scared to play it. Yeah. Now listen to it first. Right. <laughs> wings and pizza. Y'all gotta hear this. <gasps> If you're listening on 104.5 The Zone TV and you want to go to our uh, 104.5 The Zone app where you can actually hear the music there. <laughs> See, I'm unfazed by this because, again, this I, I, I really did grow up with this stuff. So it, nothing surprises me at this point. I hate y'all are going to make Inky have to follow me. So. I know. And it even had, like, the tone. Like, yeah, in wings and pizza. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> y'all For gotta sure. hear that. That's incredible. I thought you were lying. And pizza. No. Me too. Oh, I, I've never lied like, once on no this show. There's no way that song's on there. Oh, my gosh. Everything. Yeah. I didn't know how you could spin it. I did not. Wings and pizza makes sense. <laughs> Until they I, look at the show's good now. I'm, anyway. I'm good to go. <laughs> College football uh, rule change proposal <laughs> on the way out. How do we feel about a two-minute warning in college football? Expected to discuss the idea of a two-minute warning to games in a rules committee meeting at the end of this month. Thanks, I hate it. So yeah. much. Thanks, you hate it. Last year, we shortened the game by getting rid of stopping the clock on timeouts. But God forbid we lengthen the game to have a two-minute warning. You like you don't like the two-minute warning? I college? hate it for college football I because everything that college football tells us is, hey, these games are too long. We got to shorten them, man. We got to shorten them. Oh, we can make another zero on our paycheck. Hey, lengthen the game. Lengthen. Go ahead and lengthen it. Let's put in more commercial <laughs> breaks. In fact, let's have four-minute breaks in the middle of games This is and the- in playoff games. Oh, hey, in playoff games, let's do that thing the NFL used to do where we're going to have the kickoff and then do another commercial break. <laughs> then we're going to come back and play a little bit more football. So you're watching commercials with a side of football. I hate it. Yeah. I absolutely hate it. You know why I like it selfishly? <laughs> Especially when you're covering the Titans, because it gives you a chance to go up and go to the bathroom before you got to go do all the other <laughs> stuff. <Sure. laughs> you just wait for that I two minutes. I enjoy minute. it. I absolutely, I like that fact, especially in college, uh, having no timeouts left. Just the the people who make changes for college football don't actually want what's best for college football. They want what's best for them. Mm-hmm. Well, this is the other side of them selling that seven billion dollar deal, right? That is right. Chase the money at all times. Always. Mafia, mafia movies told us that. The mm-hmm. NFL has had a two-minute warning since 1942, and the concept was wow. first introduced because officials kept the official time, not the stadium. So that was a way to let everyone in the stadium know there were two minutes left. Okay. So this was not originally a television-induced timeout. It was literally because... 
people in the stadium had no idea how much time was left because they didn't keep the clock on the scoreboard. The officials kept it on a watch. So that way it was to tell everyone, hey, there's two minutes left. It was literally a warning. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I'm here for it. The more you know. standing strong now. That just means one more run for alcohol. Ron though. Slay exactly. of the FNN Bank Chat says, break. Will Lee is upset by so many little things. LOL. <laughs> College football is what I love the most in this world. And these people, and I do mean these people. <laughs> is this, you're not that Try to make it worse every year. Ramon Foster, enjoy a little bit of vacation. Yes. A little bit of R&R. Yeah. We will see you next and Tuesday. Sun. Next Tuesday, man. Come back with a tan. To, but right, right now, <laughs> it's Inky Johnson. Midweek motivation for your Wednesday, Valentine's Day morning. The Buck Rising Show is up next. And Inky Johnson, right now. You could fake it to somebody else. You could fake it to a coach. You could fake it to a teammate. But at the end of the day, as a man, you have to stand and you have to look in the mirror at yourself and say, did I give my all today? The attitude, the motivation, the inspiration, the drive that you put into the game, the heart, is going to carry you over into every aspect of your life. Every day you come out here, you do yourself a favor. You bring it as a man. You don't quit. You make your teammates better. Because one day you're going to be removed from this game. You're going to be somebody's father, going to be somebody's husband. And if you quit on wind sprints, if you quit on third and two, imagine what you're going to do in life when it gets tough. See, football is a direct correlation to life, fellas. Bring it every day to life, man.